To the rest of the news, baby powder is one of the most commonly used household products in America, but could be a major cause of ovarian cancer. On Thursday, a jury in Missouri ordered Johnson & Johnson to fork over $72 million to the family of a woman who claimed to develop ovarian cancer after using its branded baby powder. Hundreds of other women are making the same claim. Johnson & Johnson, of course, denies the connection, but this is the first time that a jury has awarded damages in a case involving talc, the main ingredient in baby powder. And unfortunately, the cancer cases keep developing. Joining me now for more on this is consumer attorney Wesley Bowden. Wesley, welcome. Uh, I want to start by, uh, why don't you start by telling us what is the link between talcum powder and ovarian cancer? What are we finding? Well, what we're finding, Mike, and thanks for having me on, is that uh, over the years, over several decades now, they've been studying this link between talc powder and ovarian cancer. And what they're finding is that the talc powder is actually traveling up the fallopian tubes and lodging itself in the ovarian tissue, causing inflammation and leading to cancer. And what these women's doctors are finding is that when they're doing these biopsies of the ovaries, they're actually finding particles of talc in the cancerous tissue. Well, so a jury, was, a jury was obviously very angry at the story that they heard over in St. Louis. And I think the thing from the reports that I'm getting is that they were most angry about the fact that we had a company that knew about this connection possibly as early as the 1980s. They understood that silica would end up causing the, the inflammation that you're talking about. And they actually understood that the very minerals that we're finding inside of these tumors now were the very minerals that had the ability to cause a kind of a scar-based cancer. Uh, what was your take on what happened in that trial? Absolutely, and there was a trial before this too in 2013 where the jury in that case found that the talc led to ovarian cancer, but the information they had didn't enrage them as much. And as you know, as we go through these trials, we uncover more and more documents. And what they found in this most recent case was that Johnson & Johnson not only knew about the dangers, but didn't bother to warn. And that's one of the most tragic things about this actual litigation is that Johnson & Johnson, because this is a consumer, a cons excuse me, a cosmetic product, they aren't regulated by the FDA. They're essentially self-regulated to determine, are we going to put a warning on our product? And if they're not, uh, really, there's, there's no way for consumers to know what type of risks they're being posed with. Uh, so well, they, in had this a case, block, they had a they had a blockbuster over-the-counter product that was selling. They understood sure. nobody was looking over their shoulder. They didn't have to answer to anybody. The FDA wasn't involved, and technically at some point they should not have been involved. But that doesn't mean that the company didn't have a moral and legal responsibility to tell women that when you use this stuff, you increase your risk of cancer as high as 30 to 60 percent. Th those are the numbers that actually oh, yeah. came out in the International Journal of Gynecological Cancer, 30 to 60 percent increase of ovarian cancer. That wasn't the only article, was it? Oh, no, there's been other studies, too. And in fact, these links go all the way back to 1982. Johnson & Johnson, of course, knew about those links, maybe even before then. Uh, but since then, they've been coming out with articles on a fairly regular basis, questioning the link, proving more and more of this causal link between ovarian cancer and talc use. And I think in 2008, Harvard actually did a study where they said women that even just use this product on a weekly basis, not even daily, but just a weekly basis, are seeing a 36% increase in risk for developing ovarian cancer. So it's, it's so, a very strong link. So tell me, uh, how does a company go about defending themselves in a case like this? I mean, obviously, the thing that we're seeing right now, if, if we look at the trial that took place in St. Louis, is to go out and hire what we call biostitutes. That's where you hire somebody who, uh, maybe a professor at a school that'll say anything for the right amount of money. Has that developed over the years? They've had a heads up on this for a while, haven't they? Oh, oh yeah, and that what they do, and you see in all types of litigation, they will start hiring experts hiring experts that their opinions are for sale for the highest bidder and they go through and they just start just basically making the science very very confusing for the jury what they can't do is run away from their own documents and Johnson & Johnson uh, they really got hurt by their own documents in this last trial in fact I've actually read some of the exhibits and they actually went as far as hiring uh, investigators third-party consultants to look at some of the stuff that they were doing 
And they actually, I want to read you this one section here. Uh, this is from their own internal investigation. They said, simply citing a previous study saying that talc does not translate through the cervix to the uterine cavity and beyond, they're talking about cancer here, uh, does not serve our best interest. They also say that uh, lifetime consumer exposure presents no, uh, no significant risk. That statement is outright false. And that's a statement that Johnson & Johnson had been perpetuating to, the, uh, to consumers at large for decades. They've known about this for decades, but of course, if they say our product causes cancer or they put any sort of warning on their product, it's going to stay on the shelves. It's not going to sell. Yeah, and these aren't small numbers. I mean, it, it, it would be one thing if you just say this happens only once in a while. Harvard study, I believe it was, that said a woman, as, as you pointed out, a woman who just used this, uses this sporadically increases their risk of ovarian cancer by something like 10 percent. It was just, th those are the kind of numbers that women should be concerned about. More importantly, those are the kind of numbers, aren't they, that Johnson & Johnson should say, we have a responsibility. We've got a legal responsibility and a moral responsibility. Nobody needs this product. Not, not a right. soul in the world needs this product. Their alternatives don't have this talc in them, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Right. And, you know, one thing to kind of put it in perspective is that you're right. Johnson & Johnson does have a moral obligation. They should be telling people about this, but they've got 26% of the market. So they're not willing to go out there and say our product is causing cancer and killing people. But there are alternatives. Uh, Cornstarch is an alternative. It's something that a lot of talc powder uh, baby powder uh, companies and, and producers have switched to because they recognize that one, they're selling a product that doesn't require a warning, that isn't regulated, and they have a, a responsibility to inform consumers because if they don't, people won't know. And so what you have is people using what, this product Wesley, for decades. I gotta, Wesley, I got about a minute, but really quickly, the, the, the companies sometimes make an evaluation of how much money they're making every year. If they're making $4 billion a year, they calculate how many years can they make $4 billion. And then they look at the, the next question is, if people become ill or they die because of our product, how much is it going to cost us? Uh, from what you're seeing early on, is there any doubt that, uh, th that that's probably what happened here? Is this, is this not just another one of those cases? It, it's tragic to say this, but I, I think that, yes, that's probably what we're looking at. They do this, uh, they have their accountants look at it. They say, if we can make a billion dollars off of this and it's only going to cost us $2 million in the long run, they look at it from numbers. They completely take humans, they completely take emotion and morals completely out of the picture. And it's, it's just, it's sad. And that's what juries are getting upset about now. And right now we're seeing, it's pointing to the fact that there's a lot of numbers, but Wesley, keep up the good work, got to go.